This morning our scripture is going to come from Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. And I will be reading verses 1 through 4. Then I'm going to skip over to verse 22. Acts chapter 22. I mean Acts 2, starting with verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mighty worship wind. And it filled the, all the house where they were sitting. And they appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it set upon each of them. And they all were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, dwelt men out of every nation under the heavens. Now skip over to verse 22. Even men of Israel heard these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. As we remain standing for the hymn of the hour, as we receive this hand of God, let us receive him now by the elevation of our hand and call his name, Reverend Hardy. Encourage him right now. Tell him, preach. 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 While he preach, you pray. Amen. Yeah. 
give you all the glory and all the praises. For it's in the mighty name of Jesus that we ask that you lose your word and allow it to go free. Let it fall, O oh, Heavenly Father, on good ground that it will produce much fruit. And, O oh, Heavenly Father, we give you all the praises. It's in Jesus' name we ask these things. Same, same. same. Preaching is just talking out loud. 
Amen. Talk about that, that's all it is. But listen, in that talk, what you're doing, you are explaining the scripture. And I had trouble with this thing about exegeting and eisegeting. And I went to one of the websites and I pulled it in and it said, exegeting. He said, it's simply explaining the scripture. And he said, explaining the scripture to the best of your natural ability according to the facts that you have studied that bring about biblical truth. Amen? Amen. So as I exegete the scriptures today, I want you all to go with me. Amen? I'm coming from Sister Bessie, thank her for reading those few passages of scriptures, but I'm coming from the second chapter of Acts. But, but, but I want to focus my text from the second chapter, the 22nd verse, to the 38th. It's why I want to place the focus of the subject. And I'm going to read a few verses here just to get us started. But now, you will need all 47 of those verses in order to get a comprehend completely what the second chapter is at is talking about. Amen? Amen. Amen. Second, 22nd verse said, Ye men of Israel, Hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved to God among you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Being delivered by the determined counsel and foreknowledge of God, you have taken and by wicked hand have crucified and slain him. <clears throat> whom God had raised up and have loosened the pain of death because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. In this 37th verse, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brother, what shall we do? 38, then Peter said unto them, repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin, and ye shall receive the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Now, from those few verses, I, I like to use for a subject matter, power that draws. Power that draws. And, and, and being so close to Christmas in the season and the time of giving. You know, we love ourselves some Santa Claus, don't we? Yeah, and for a sub-topic, i like to just have you think for a moment on a promise with a gift. That's too much information, isn't it? Too much information. That's why I heard one say, I don't preach for information. He said, but they preach for transformation. If there is no information, there will be no transformation. So, hey, amen. Can I get a witness on that? Amen. If you don't know what you're being transformed into, then how are you going to train? Amen. amen. So you may need information. So I'm going to give you some information here. We find today that Luke is our writer. Luke, Luke, Dr. Luke. Luke is the author of two books. Luke and the Acts of the Apostles. And, and if you look, uh, Luke here is writing about things that he have first-hand knowledge of. Why? Because the majority of the time, Luke was there. Well, how do you know Luke was there? Because he said, we. Amen. And any time you say we, I'm included. Is that right? So Luke was there, and he know exactly what he's talking about. And we know that this, this, this book here is, in the second chapter, he, he's speaking about an event that had occurred. On the day of Pentecost, is that right? Amen. It said when the day of Pentecost had fully come. Yes. Amen. Now you, you you got to have, like I said, you got to have Acts, the book of Acts. You, you need this entire thing. Because if we look back in the first chapter, Jesus told his disciples what to do. Is that right? 
he had given them this information while he was teaching them, amen, back during the four Gospels about what was going to happen. Now, look, they're they going to deliver me up. I'm going to be crucified. And I'm going to rise on the third day. He said, listen now, John 17, 16. He said, and, and I'm going away. He said, now because I told you I was going away, your heart had grown soft. He said, but, but, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. He said, why? Because you'll see me again. Is that right? He said, and then I'm going to my father. Now listen to this here. He said, and I will not leave you comfortless. He said, but I'm going to pray to my father and that he's going to send you. Amen. The gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. He said, now listen. So often we get caught up in this eye gospel. But listen to what Jesus told his disciples. He said, uh, uh, and when he come, he will not speak of himself. Hmm? He said he won't speak of himself. So this I did, I went, I got, I had. You need to know that's not Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. That's not Holy Ghost. That's I Ghost. Amen. I Ghost have no power. Is that right? Amen. If you want to uh, 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 draw men and women by your power, they have what they call a drawing power. And then there's a power that draws. Is that right? Amen. Drawing power will only last for that occasion. Tell me about it. In other words, bring in some activities that you want to fill the house with children. Amen. Those activities will draw those kids, those children, and some of their adults. But when that occasion is over, did, did, did y'all hear me? All right. Amen. That, that is drawing power. But when you have power that draws, it not only will draw you, but it will hold you. It'll keep you. Amen. Let me go on back in. And look on the day of Pentecost. They were sitting there in the upper room. Why were they sitting in the upper room? Because, listen, they were obedient to the Lord. And in, 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 in uh, the first chapter, I believe, around the fourth verse, he said, Tarry, he said, go ye, and depart not out of Jerusalem, amen, until you be, come on, endowed with the Holy Ghost. He said, I want you to stay there. And then you look at that eighth verse, first, one and eight, he said, and when the Holy Ghost come upon you, he said, you shall receive power. What power? Power that draws. Amen. This is what he's talking about. Now we find that Pentecostal means 50. Is that right? Because it was 50 days after the Passover, amen, that the day of Pentecostal, amen, took place. Is that right? And, and if you look back at the book, you will see that it was Pentecost, the Passover, Pentecost, first fruit, and then it was Pentecost. Is that right? Christ got up on the first day of the week, which presented the day of what? First fruit. Amen. And after first fruit came the day of Pentecost. Is that right? When Jesus had walked around with those persons for 40 days before he ascended up into heaven. Is that right? Amen. Ten days afterward, on the day of Pentecost, those saints were gathered together in the upper room. And while they was in the upper room, something began to happen. Let me tell you this power that draw. It said that there was a sound came like a mighty rushing wind. Is that right? And it said, and after that sound came, listen what happened. People start to come in to where the sound was. Talk to me. This is power that draw. And after they got there, they saw something. And what they saw, amen, amazed them. Why? Because they saw men, amen, sitting there with fire upon them, and it presented to them, the Bible said, cloven tongue. It said, and with those tongues, they began to speak. Yeah, we got people uh, frustrated walking around uh, doing things that don't make sense, but they want to put it on the Holy Ghost. I got a little bit of Talk to me, somebody. But now that's fine if you're talking to the Lord, but don't talk to me with that. Now why? Because the Bible said that this tongue that they were speaking with 
was a dialect, it was a language that those peoples could understand. Those people, listen, Luke give us uh, information that states that there were more than, well, it was about 15 different nations represented that day. And all 15 of them heard them speaking their language that they understood. Now, now, this cannot be possible. How can it be possible? He said, aren't all of these Galileans? Go through your book. You'll find, aren't all of these Galileans? And they said, yes, they're Galileans. Well, how can this thing be? He said, well, now, the reason why this is happening, uh, that, that, listen, y'all, <laughs> when people start hearing stuff they don't want to hear, they, they put it on anything. He said, oh, no, them, them, them fellas, they done gone mad. No, no, they're not going mad, and then here they come. Oh, yeah, that boy been down at the club all night. He's drinking. They drunk. He said, this is their problem. They are drunk. Why are they drunk, huh? Listen, <clears throat> it's good to be under the influence. Amen. And if you want to deal with this gospel, you got to be P-U-I. Amen. You got to be preaching under the influence, and it got to be the influence of the Holy Spirit. Talk to me, somebody. You know, some of us drive DUI. Some of us walk DUI. Amen. But when you preach you out, you got to be preaching under the influence of the Holy Ghost. Is that right? And when you're preaching under the influence of the Holy Ghost, it's something you don't have to worry about. It said, being assembled together with them, and they should, uh, that they should not depart until the Holy Spirit has come upon them. Now he's telling them that this is where it comes. But I want you to look at Peter here now. Peter is about to preach. Amen. And he's going to preach to them according to, amen, by the Holy Spirit from the Word of God. <clears throat> Is that right? It said the 14th verse of Peter, uh, after he heard him, he stood up and said, Oh, no, no. These men are not drunk. But he said, As you suppose. And you, you know, y'all suppose that he drunk under something. They, they, they drunk all right. But not as you suppose. Why? Right? Because they are under the influence of the Holy Spirit. He said, but now this is something. He, he had to go all the way back to the Old Testament. Yeah. Amen. This was over 400 years, I believe they said it was, when Joel had made this prophecy. He said, in the last days, he said, I'm going to pour my spirit. Is that right? Yeah. He said, upon who? All flesh. He said, in your son. This book got some of these denominations messed up around here to where they don't allow certain things. They have created bylaws. Why? Because they have not fully accepted what God said in his word. Is that right? He said, I'm going to pour it out on your sons, and I'm going to pour it out on your daughters. Amen. I'm going to put it on your young men. I'm going to put it on your old men. He said, I'm going to put it on your handmaid. I'm going to put it on your servant. Why? Because he's not biased and he's not prejudiced about who he pour his Holy Spirit out of on. Amen. And he said that the old men shall, what? Prophesy. And he said the young men shall have vision. And he said they shall dream dreams. Is that right? But he, he did not only stop there. He had to use something. Peter had to use something that was legitimate. Amen. They have what they call now Reformed Theology. And in this Reformed Theology, they say the Word of God didn't mean what it said. <laughs> Amen. That Reformed Theology doesn't mean what it said. And I want you to pay close attention what we used that day to draw those people to the crowd. Amen. It wasn't turnip green. Talk to them. It wasn't candy yam. It wasn't fried chicken. It wasn't a gospel jamboree. Amen. But it was the power of God that drove those people to that place. Amen. Come on, y'all know it, right? It said, now God that told them to do one thing. He said, go to a place and wait. Amen. We done got so now we can't wait on the Lord. Amen. The Lord said that he, the Lord said that he said, I, I'll take care of you. Amen. I'll take care of you. Amen. But so often we want to help him out. Amen. Remember, God is God by himself. He don't need your help. Amen. He don't believe in looking in the book. He said, now, 
in that old days when they got ready to make their offering, they had to go to a place that God himself had ordered. Mm -hmm. Amen. In, in Jerusalem is where the temple was. And this is where God had told them to be. Amen. And let's get this thing straight here now. Uh, the, 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 the Bible does not give us an illustration of how not to do what God said. Okay. Amen. If God said to bring your tithes and your offering, that's what he meant. Right. He didn't say raise your tithes and your offering. Is that right? That's right? He said to bring. Yeah. And if you think that you can raise it and get that blessing that he was talking about in, uh, to Solomon when he said, I open up the one and pull you out. That's, if you think you're going to get that blessing by not doing what he told you, I'm just preaching out loud. Is that right? It will never happen. Amen. It won't happen. Why? Because it got to be done the same way that he said do it. Amen. You got to meet God what God said meet him at. In other words, you and I cannot go to God. Uh, the only true place to meet God is going to be by faith in Christ Jesus. Oh, that's cool. Watch your preaching. Watch your preaching. And when we look at this, this, this passage of scripture here, I want you to look at the word. The word power. The word power is the ability to do or act of doing or accomplishing something. Is that right? That's power. When those person heard that wind, heard those peoples, seen that fire, amen, something was happening. Amen, and that something that was happening was by the power of God. Amen. You can walk out here and anoint and lay hands all day long. Amen. But if God don't move, amen, all you're doing is rubbing head. Talk to me, somebody. And because you rub today, don't mean it's going to happen today. Amen. Because I read in my Bible when they said there was 10 men, amen, that were leapers. And it said they began to walk off after God had told them they was healed. They began to walk off. Is that right? And as they was walking, they became clean. Talk to me, somebody. Sometimes you just got to walk and wait on the Lord. Amen. You got to do it by faith. That's right. And that look, the, 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 the Spirit had just now began to work on the day of Pentecost. The Spirit had been there since the beginning. Amen. It was in Genesis 1 and 2 when the Spirit identified himself as being active and working in the world. Is that right? Why? In Acts uh, uh, Genesis 1 and 2, the Bible said that the world, the earth, was born. Yeah. And it was dark. Yeah. But it said the Spirit moved upon the water. Yeah. The third verse you heard him say, let them yeah. be light. Yeah. And their light yeah. was. Amen. Judges 6 and 34, when, when the Mennonites had came in, is that right? And had ran down on Israel. Amen. Had trotted their gardens, tore up their wine press, raided their homes. There was a young man there by the name of Gideon. The Bible says the spirit moved up on Gideon. And after it moved up on Gideon, Gideon blowed the trumpet. He called for those of Manasseh. Is that right? And then there was those of Benjamin. Is that right? And it said they assembled themselves. Talk to me, somebody. Over 15,000 men. Amen. But the Spirit told Gideon, you got too many. Amen. When the Spirit is moving, amen, it don't take but a few. Amen. If you want to get something done, get you a few Spirit-filled men. Amen. Don't worry with all that the can't do. Don't worry with the ain't do. But you get you a man that got you some will do in you. Oh, yeah. Know what I'm talking about. Been there and tried that. And, and I want you to, to, to be careful and don't let everything move you. Uh, you call it the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because so many of us move by emotion. Is that right? The emotion is the one that make me feel good. Amen. If you, you make me feel good, amen, I move for you. But if you make me feel bad, 
I'll move away from you. Talk to me, somebody. And this is what happened in our building so much. Yeah. Huh? We got so many moving off feel good. Yeah. Amen. But I'm looking, I'm looking on down here a minute to tell you about feel good. But if we, we look here, there, there was a, a young man by the name of David. Yeah. First Samuel. Well. Six chapter. Is that right? Yeah. 16 and 13. Yeah. Amen. It said when God got ready, he called Samuel. And Samuel went in, took a veil of oil, poured it over David's head. And after he poured it over David's head, the Bible said the Spirit came upon him. Amen. Isn't that right? But listen, listen, listen. And it said the Spirit departed from Saul. Is that right? And then there was an evil spirit came in from the law and rest upon Saul. So you need to watch those spirits. Amen. Because an evil spirit would have you thinking you're doing what's right and all the time you're doing what's wrong. Amen. The evil spirit would tell you he can't do and then she can't do. I'm the only one can do it. The Holy Spirit won't speak of himself. Amen. The Holy Spirit is not going to give you an eye. Uh, the Holy Spirit is only going to speak that. Mm -hmm. That was the event in Zechariah. When, when, when he began to build a Lord house. And as he began to build a Lord house, there was so much ruckus. You know, they even called Zerubbabel and told him, said, uh, you need to come down here and have dinner with us. He said, oh, no, I can't come. He said, well, I tell you what you come down here, we're going to have a mighty fine meal. Yeah. Amen. We're going to lay out the table for you. And Sir Bell the back and said, hey, I can't come down now. Yeah. Amen. Why? Because I got some work on my hand. Yeah. I got to build a Lord house. Is that right? Yeah. But then after Sir Bell kept listening, he started stressing over that thing, Pastor. Yeah. He said, uh, I got do something. Yeah. He said, I ain't able to do it by myself. Right. He said, I don't have this. Well, he said, and I don't have that. Yeah. And they coming up on me. Yeah. But listen what the Lord said. Oh, Sir Bell, I want you to know today, yeah. it's not going to be by might. Yeah. It's not going to be by power, yeah. but it's going to be by the Spirit of the Lord. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. So don't worry about what you don't have. Yeah. Amen. Because it's not by your money. It's not by their money, but it's by the Spirit of the Lord. Is that right? I'm talking about what the Lord said. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, he meant every word. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. If we look here, we find Peter began to preach it. Yeah. Is that right? Out of Joel. He said he was explaining the scripture from the Old Testament. Is that right? But see, if you had accepted Moses' writing, amen, you would have accepted Jesus. When old men were standing there, Peter had to bring them to mind. You, you know, Peter. Oh, no good, Peter. You know, ill cutting off Peter. You know, fearing Peter. Amen. But you listen to feed Peter now. Uh, after he had been filled with the Holy Spirit. Is that right? There's some power. Peter had gotten some power. He started off with Joel. Amen. He received power to witness. He drew out a prophecy. The scripture concerning Christ. Is that right? He had already noticed that Isaiah had been fulfilled when he said a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a child. He already knew that God's word was coming to pass. He said, these things that you are seeing, is that right? It's not because of alcohol, but it's because of the Holy Spirit. Is that right? He said, these things they are doing is not by their own will, but it's by the will of God. Once you start to walk in, in the will of God, let me tell you, things start to falling off. Stuff start to get out of the way. Let me tell you, dead men start to coming out of the grave. When the power of God moves, blind men receive their sight. When the power of God moves, lame men are made to walk. When the power of God moves, The power of God moved. You can look around here and see it. It said now that Peter said in his word, he said, this is not uh, the work of some unknown source. 
Is that right? You find Peter when he told him, he said, Ye men of Israel. You know, so nice sometimes to hear a sweet song. Is that right? It's good to hear what Jesus done for you. But it's good to hear what you done for Jesus. Is that right? You say, what have you done for the Lord? Look back and start to calculate it. Why are you the one, amen, that crucified? Why are you the one that turned him over to the wrong soldier? Why are you the one who lift up the cross? But when Peter got to telling those Jews, he said, by your hand, you crucified him. And the man looked at him and said, how do we do it? He said, this is the Messiah. Is that right? That the Lord had already told you about. He said, you kill all the prophets. That's right, he killed the prophet, and now you have killed the Holy One of Israel. Is that right? He said, but listen here, I got a promise for you. The man said, what shall we do? He said, I got a promise for you. He said, what shall we do? Peter said, believe on the name of Jesus Christ. He said, and be baptized. And he said, you shall receive remission for your sin. See, that's a promise with a gift. Every now and then you need to look back at the gift. See, the gift has already been given, but all you got to do is receive it. Is that right? He said, and after Peter had received the gift, I mean, after they had heard Peter, Peter said, now listen, the power that draw. Is that when Peter had told them that, is that right? And they believed and they accepted Jesus. You know, if you was a Jew and you believed in anything else, except the most, under the Moses law, then you would be kicked out of the kindergarten. You would be disbarred from your family. But after they heard Peter preaching, they said, I give up everything because I'm going to follow Jesus. Isn't that right? The Bible tells me that after they heard the sermon, that they turned around that day and listen to him, what I'm about to tell you now. It said there was 3,000 souls that were saved. That was 3,000 men that gave their life to Christ. And I want to tell you now, those persons who are building these churches, amen, you're building a hell hole, I can tell you that. Because the Bible said that God added to the church daily as they needed. Talk to me, somebody. And not only that, he said, that, first of all, he said, believe. Amen, you got to believe and then be baptized. He didn't say, get baptized, and then try to be believed. And Paul told us about it. When he got ready for his deacon vote, this is what he said. First of all, you got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It didn't say get to be deacon and then get filled, but he said be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then, or that's the Bible. That's the Bible. You can't do it without it. So now the pre Peter began to preach. Peter used the word. He said that there is power that draws. Draw to cause to move in a particular direction, such as pulling. You ever tried to go somewhere, but you just couldn't go? It was something drawing you. It was the Holy Spirit. You ever tried to leave somewhere and you just couldn't go? It was the Holy Spirit. I'm going to share this with you. <laughs> it was a time in my life mm -hmm, when I was tired. I didn't want no part. And I said, I'm going to get up and get out of here. I laid down one evening. I was trying to wait until it get dark. After it got dark, I got up and started packing my bag. I mean, my intention was, I laid there. I couldn't move my leg. I laid there. I couldn't move my hand. I laid there. I tried to call my son. Couldn't make a noise. Tried to call my daughter. I couldn't make a noise. Tried to call my wife. I couldn't make the word. But I lay right there. And I kept on saying, yes, Lord. I said, yes, Lord. I said, yes, Lord. I said, yes, Lord. And after a while, 
I want to tell you my legs start moving. Yeah, my hands start walking. I tell you, I holler so loud. Folks heard me down the street because I know I couldn't say a word. I said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, I want to tell you about the day. something about when the Holy Spirit removed. And I'm going to tell you something about that word. That word, not only will it draw you, but that word will keep you. I heard it said in Hebrew, the word is sharper than a two-edged sword. The Bible said that it'll cut you. Hey, if you've been wrong, this word will cut you. It said that when Peter started preaching, it said they was pierced in their heart. It wasn't nothing but the word of God. And when you start preaching, I'm talking about this word. Things will happen. This word said that he'll draw you. But the word said it'll even drive you. It said that if you're in sin, hey man, it'll set you free. It said if you. I'm talking about this word. Not only would this word draw you, but this word also keep you. And let me tell you what this word did one day. This word wrapped itself in the wound of a bird. This word came down, amen, in the form of a human flesh. But the Bible said that he took on no reputation. He made no fashion of it. He didn't decide to try to be equal with God. Amen, the Bible said he came obedient. He said in his word, he came obedient unto death. He said, but right now, he said, God has a highly exalted him. Amen. And sit him down at the right hand, throne of glory. Is that right? David said, sit thou on my right hand until I make thy enemy thy push too. But can't you see the word? Sitting up on the throne. And I heard him say it in the word. He said, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. That he's Lord of Lord. Hey, hey, he's the king of kings. I want to know today, have you tried it? That the same God that you crucified, God has raised him up. Sit him at the right hand. And he right now making intercession. Intercession for the lost. Making intercession for the drunk. Making intercession for the lying. So who am I? Amen. If God justifies you. I want you to know today he won't deny you. I said he died one day, but he didn't stay dead. Early Sunday morning, he got up out of his grave. Is that right? All power. He got all power in his hand. I'm going to tell you he was walking one day. Is that right? From two men going their way to Emmanuel. And they were walking preacher. And I'm going to tell you something. We just can't have it. It's the thing to have in our life. Yeah. They make us feel so bad. Well, Amen. Yeah. If we began to become sorry, yeah. we had to drop our head. But I want you to know today, no matter what it is, ye yeah. men, why are you walking and looking so sad? Yeah. He said, Have you not heard? Yeah. Are you a stranger in this land? Yeah. This thing that has come to pass, yeah. that they said that he was the Messiah. But oh, somebody said that he has risen. He's risen from the dead. So I want to tell you today, don't be sad. Lift up your head. Amen. Unto the hill, for folk come at your strength. I say it come from Jesus. It come from Jesus. It come from Jesus. He who was dead. But I want to tell you today, now he is alive. How do you know he alive? Every once in a while, I have to call on his name. I can feel, I can feel, I can feel him when he moves. Oh, Lord. Those are churches open. Those are churches open. I'll tell you, he died for you. But he didn't stay dead. Early one Sunday morning, he got up. He got up with all power. Oh, power in his hand. I said, he can't destroy, and I tell you, he will defend. How do you know he'll defend? Those are churches, though. Those are churches, though. All you got to do is try. All 
all you got to do is try. You ought to come to Jesus while you have time. Don't worry about the crowd. You need to come to Jesus. The web of two or three is a symbol. He said, I'll be in the midst. Don't worry about the north, nigga. Just come on to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Go ahead, sir.
I want you to know Mary was filled with the Holy Spirit. I want you to hear me now. But Mary still needed a Savior. Yeah. Amen. I want you to know Elizabeth, John the Baptist, received the Holy Spirit. But Elizabeth still needed a Savior. So just because you've been filled, you still need a Savior. And I heard him say it in his word. It's good to have a little bit. Amen. Some of us got just enough uh -huh, to make us say amen. Amen. But if you read the passage of scripture, it said, be ye filled with the Holy Spirit. And if you want to see things move, oh, 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 Lord, have mercy. I said, oh, Yeah. 